Hey, what is up guys? It is Slick or Slick Moff here back again with another video and back on the channel today is Hogue Law, corporate lawyer, law expert, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for joining and helping us break down all the shenanigans going on with WB Games, Warner Brothers more broadly, DC Comics and all of that, all that type of thing. Thank you so much for joining once again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been quite a week for them, hasn't it? It's been wild. We're going to go through all of it. We're going to break through some of the misinformation. I think some of the misreporting that's been going on in the trades. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're going to delve into all of that today. And uh, before we get into it, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and check out Hoag's, uh, Hoag Law's channel in the description below. And uh, that link will be there in the top byline. And you can go and subscribe to him if you enjoy his commentary and analysis here. Okay. Or even so... if you don't, I accept downvotes. <laughs> yeah, no, I go either way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay. So a couple things that we can delve into. So first Warner media organization update, they right. released a memo that a lot of people were signaling, Oh, they're not trying to sell WB games anymore. That's the way the trades have interpreted. So I'm going to read the memo really quickly, but that is yep. ultimately, uh, if you can recall a month or two ago, the big news was that they were trying to sell WB games and get rid of their assets, AT&T, $200 billion in debt. They're trying to get rid of things. And everyone's like, Oh no, don't sell to Activision. Don't sell to EA. Don't sell to all these companies. And they released this memo that people were interpreting as signaling that they're definitely not selling anymore. And let me just read what they said. So the memo reads as follows. Simplifying our approach and narrowing our focus goes beyond, for example, having one content organization versus two. It also means that we will be reducing the size of our teams, our layers, and our overall workforce. These reductions are not in any way a reflection of the quality of the people impacted nor their work. It is simply a function of the above changes I believe are necessary for Warner Media and our collective ability to best serve customers. So this is in a memo kind of justifying some of the things and changes that they're going to make. This is part of uh, this part is painful, but it's hard. It is difficult to find the appropriate words here to say other than that. I'm very sorry. These are talented, admired leaders and beloved colleagues. Three of these talented, admired leaders who uh, will be leaving the company are Bob Greenbald, Kevin Riley and Keith Kakaza. So a couple of people basically getting laid off here signaling that there are some issues with the company more broadly and that the company's in financial trouble. So AT&T, $200 billion in debt. Talk a little bit about what went into this decision and, and why they've made those decisions in the way that they have with, with uh, so much expediency. Yeah, so if you, if you look at this whole memo, and, and I saw this first looking at things completely outside of video games, not, not talking about WB Interactive Entertainment at all. I saw it in The Hollywood Reporter. I think I saw it reported in Deadline. Warner Media is obviously a lot bigger than video games. They put in this CEO. You saw it at the top of the memo. He says he's been here for 90 days. He's been here for three months. You put in a CEO. You install someone like that essentially as a hatchet man. Um, that doesn't mean he's a bad person. That doesn't mean anything about him as a, as a personality. It means that you think if you're AT&T or even if you're Warner Media's board or whomever might have made this decision, that you need to streamline. You need to cut back. There are things, there are redundancies that exist in your company that need to be changed. Uh, and so he comes in. He does what amounts to an evaluation process. He talks to everybody. You, you might have seen uh, like in the movie Office Space where the people come in and say, what do you do here? That's what he does. He goes through everything. And he is generally given some kind of edict by some higher up, whether that's all the way at at and just an immediate board supervisory position or something like that. And he says, OK, I need to cut this much out of the budget. I need to reorganize these things. And one thing that I would impress upon you and, and your audience here is that this is a very long letter that talks about everything that is changing at Warner Media, including the most important fact, which is that they are taking the HBO Max product, which is their streaming service. It's their Netflix alternative like Peacock at NBC or Hulu. Right. Uh, and they are trying to elevate it within their organization. They are saying we are no longer going to be defined by all of these separate organizations. We're not going to have one organization for HBO and one organization for True TV and all this other stuff. We're going to put them all into one bucket and we're going to have an HBO Max bucket for streaming and we're going to have an everything else bucket, which I think they call something like studios and television or something along those lines. And so when they do this, this is a massive reorganization. And this was, I don't know whether it was leaked or whether this was deliberately sent out to the, the trades on the movie side, that they want to communicate to their employees that these are going to be the changes and these are going to be what are the same. And when we start talking about Warner Brothers Interactive specifically, they fall into the same camp that these things won't really be changed. And that's the, that's the context of the messaging that was put into this letter. And one of the things that I really think the games journalists on this side of the question got wrong, got very significantly wrong, is not taking into that account that context 
of what was being said here. Right, and the, the, all of the headlines are saying AT&T is keeping hold of Warner Brothers games. Yeah. This is evidence yeah. of this. And all of that comes from this one line that says from the CEO of Warner Media, which of course is yep. a reputable source, Jason Killar. Yeah. He says, Warner Brothers Interactive remains part of the studios and networks group. End quote. That is the line that they are sharing as like, oh, yeah, Warner Brothers Media, it's going to be a part of it for now. But this yeah. is not him saying that they're not going to sell to Activision. It doesn't mean that they don't have any interest in selling to EA or, or what have you, especially right. under that pressure of $200 billion in debt when they're trying to sell off assets to save money, cut costs. And these layoffs are just one aspect of it. And it's it's very weird that this long letter, like you said, <laughs> announcing tons of layoffs, announcing tons of shifts and shakeups and all these other huge things going on that means a lot of uncertainty for everyone involved here. It does. I, no, I, and that's a shame. Yeah. Right. And I view this almost as a sort of, um, I, I think that, they're concerned that some employees are going to be jumping ship because rumor floats that they're trying to sell to Activision. And a lot of developers, of course, they're like, oh, well, we don't want to work for EA. We know what that's going to mean. We know sure. that we're going to be pushing microtransactions and doing these other things. Whereas Warner Brothers, <laughs> say what you will about them, say what you will about them. They do have a, a high quality control. Like their QA is very good. That's why they've canceled so many games at W Montreal. It's because they weren't making games up to the standard that they expect. So uh, they've also published back in Arkham City, which in my opinion is one of the best video games in the past decade. So they they really do a great job at making sure that only quality games get published. And and as a result of that, I think that we're seeing some of these shakeups because revenue's not been coming in and they are trying to to save money, cut costs with these with these. Yeah. So it's just weird how they've turned this, that the media has kind of turned this as a positive thing. And they're really latching onto that one single line about Warner Brothers Interactive remains part of the studios and networks group. But this is in no way a, a uh, confirming that there will not be any sell to Activision or EA. At bare minimum, it's a red herring. Right. Like if you just want to say we don't know and it doesn't move in any direction or the other, that that would be OK with me. I, I don't know if you saw I framed my video on this subject on the question that essentially it was more likely now that they would be sold and not remain with WB because of what has happened here. And we'll talk about that, that the structure of this particular entity hasn't changed. And that's what you need it to to do. You need it to stay the same in order to have a better chance of selling it. But even if you wanted to read this whole thing and say, well, we can't say one way or the other what this means for Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, I think you could. To read it the opposite way, I, you know, I, I think it just lacks context, whether that's professional experience, whatever it might be. I like to be empathetic towards the folks that have to put out right. you know, article after article every day. Um, but I do think Warner Brothers Interactive remains part of the studios and networks group is the kind of true statement that doesn't mean anything, yeah. right? I mean, it was it was true when it, when the day started. It was true when the day ended. Um, it's not the same kind of thing as I don't know if you followed this that closely, but GameStop was trying to sell itself uh, last year, and so they said, "Hey, we're going on the market. We're looking for potential buyers." Uh, and then a little bit after that point in time, they came out with a statement that essentially said, "We're removing ourselves from the market. We're going to make a go of of doing things differently here right. here at GameStop." Now, whether or not that'll be a success or not, I, you know, I have my doubts. But that's generally what you see happen is when that kind of sales process is stopped, you you make a clarifying statement. Now, this is a little bit different because Warner Media has never actually gone out and said that Warner Brothers is on the block. This is all kind of sources say stuff that's gone out to a number of reputable outlets. So there's no reason to believe they aren't. Uh, but it might not make sense for them to specifically and officially say that they have stopped that process at any point in time. So there's a lot of guesswork involved. Do you think? But the other thing. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, do you think there's a possibility that they're basically trying to play hard to get to to Xbox? So in other words, that maybe they were undergoing negotiations and they're saying, oh, we're walking away. And and like I said, almost like playing hard to get in a sense and saying, oh, we actually kind of want to hold on to it. Basically signaling, like you said, as a red herring or or is that more 4D chess than they're even thinking of? I wouldn't say that they're doing that. Okay. No. And the okay. reason I wouldn't say that they're doing that is because this is a much, much, much bigger thing than interactive. I mean... One of the things you can just take from context is the fact that they are one sentence in what is probably 200 halfway through one paragraph that's talking about other things. You know, if, if your audience winds up going through this letter, you'll see that when that interactive sentence comes up, it says they remain part of the studios and networks group, which is an interesting phrase anyway, since studios and networks didn't exist until this letter was made, that everything else is about changes. 
This person is changing their role. This person is changing their role. This is a new group. This is a new group. This is going to be organized over here. You're going to find yourself under here. And then when you get to remains, all that you're trying to establish is that Warner Brothers Interactive and their franchising group, which is also listed in this sentence, are staying in the same place. And so that's just the context of what's happened here. The other thing I would say about this is that, you know, at and is a big entity. They purchased Warner Media whole hog, essentially, as part of a bigger transaction. And this is the kind of time frame that you would expect a large transaction like that to lead to cuts like this one, to figuring out where your efficiencies are, where your redundancies are. And so this is a normal step, especially when you do have that large kind of uh, deficit uh, on your balance sheet. And it's one of the reasons why everybody has said Warner Brothers Interactive is up for bid anyway, is because they do think they can get something like $4 billion for it. And it's a functional entity that, that Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment makes good revenue, has a reasonable revenue source for whoever might be a buyer, they, they could get that money in the door and it would still be able to be sold as a functional business. It's not an asset stripping op operation. It's not just kind of dividing up all of these various things. If you can sell an operating company, you can, you can sometimes get a premium for this thing functions right now. We're just changing ownership. And so AT&T looks at that and says, yeah, we potentially want to shop it. I have no reason to disbelieve any of those rumors. Uh, you know, I've done a little bit of talking that suggests that, you know, I'm not sure Microsoft is actually really in the bidding because all we've ever heard is express interest. And that's basically what you would hear from anybody. There's there's no platform holder or other publisher that wouldn't express interest if the price was right. So I'm not sure that they've gone down that road too far. But overall, when you look at something like this, it, it's more important, in my opinion, to note what didn't happen rather than what what, what is said here, which is that Warner Brothers Interactive is staying the same, which means that it is much more saleable than it would be if they were otherwise going through a restructuring at the same time. And, and to kind of get that, you have to understand how long a process it is to go through the sale of a full business unit that's worth $4 billion. You're talking about having another entity come in and check the financial records, the consolidated financial records, divvy up what is happening and to whom, potentially have talks with some of these employees. And so if you've got people that are even moderately down the line of potentially putting in a, a, a closable bid, for what this project would be, you don't change the product. You don't move Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment around. You don't make massive shifts in it. So when I see something like this, which is virtually everything at Warner Media has changed, except for Warner Brothers Interactive, I look at that and say, oh. no, there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees that someone has a bid in, but there is a pretty strong signal that this is currently being shopped and we wouldn't want to change it right now because you don't take the product off the shelf, make material adjustments to it, and then say, are you still interested in buying it? You let them value it because it's a long process. Right. And in this case, those substantial changes, because likely if they were planning on retaining WB Games, and tell me if I'm understanding this correctly, if they were planning sure. on retaining WB Games, they probably would have made a bunch of changes like, oh, yeah, this director got canned or this person's moving around here. You they would, would see have announced... those kinds of things. Yeah. Right. Whereas the fact that nothing was announced is a sign that they're actually leaving things as they are, whereas there are changes to literally everything else. The fact that it is changing, uh, uh, staying the same with WB Games relative to DC Comics, which of course had tons of changes um, yeah. in, in the past little bit, that's actually a red flag more than a positive sign. Yeah, you well, they could always make the changes later, right? Right. So, so essentially, you reserve if you're Warner's Media, you look at this and you say, "I reserve the ability to sell this thing," uh, and so I want to keep that option window open as long as possible. And if it just looks like it's not coalescing, you know, let's say it is Microsoft or Take Two or whomever, and they say, "You know what? We've looked at it. We valued it." Two billion dollars, and AT and T and Warner Media says, "No, no, no. It's worth a lot more than that. We're not willing to sell it to you for that." And they say, "Fine," and they walk away. I mean, that's your, your high stakes negotiating. We think right. it's worth this. We think it's worth that. It's like buying a house. It's just a really big, expensive house. And, and so they go away, and then Warner Media says, "Okay, well, now we have to go through the process with Warner Interactive as well and see what kind of streamlining needs to be done to that if we keep it." But what this does is say okay, we can continue to potentially sell it. We can keep our options open. We are never going to hear until there's an agreement in principle about whether something is closed. So it's possible somebody's pretty close to putting in a bid. You don't know. And so they keep it the same. And then if it all falls apart and they don't get a bid that they like, then maybe you issue a press release. Maybe you don't. You just suddenly have uh, an examination of what the structure of the Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment Group is. And suddenly 
you know, Rocksteady and Monolith have been put together into a super team. Uh, you know, who knows? But, like, that you do something different with that asset, and you do not want to do that in the shadow of a potential acquisition. Right. And, and I really think about it from WB's perspective. Let's really think about this. So at WB Games Montreal, one of their studios, of course, uh, we're going to look at Rocksteady, WB Montreal, and then NetherRealm. So at WB Games Montreal, sure. they've developed a Suicide Squad game. They developed a Batman game. And rumors are that in early 2014 area, they were preliminary uh, working on a Superman game, early stages. All three of those games were canceled. That studio has not uh, released a game since 2013. Rocksteady, their last game was announced in 2014. It's now 2020. And yeah. uh, NetherRealm, you know, they had Injustice 2. That did okay, but nothing crazy there. Since 2017, they have not had any game bring in any sort of substantial revenue at all. So, also... W Games Montreal has over 400 employees. Rocksteady has now over 300, I believe. So those are incredibly, yeah, incredibly high operating costs just to maintain these companies that are not publishing any games right now. And yeah. you have that model. Model B that they could look at is essentially wherein they own Batman, they own Superman, they license these characters out to other studios. The other studios endure all of the operating costs of a studio, and they just get a fat paycheck at the end of it or a royalty or however it works because they own Batman. So in order for another company to own, uh, to use a Batman, like let's say you know Naughty Dog or whatever wanted to make a Batman game, they have to pay sure. Warner Brothers and DC to use that character. And yep. they are just collecting a royalty, there is no down cost or, or sort of downside to that other than someone misusing your IP and brand, which you can set the stipulations around, presumably, if you own the character. So they have a lot more control that way. And not only that, there's just no operating cost, no downside monetarily. And right now, I think that they're examining the this pain point where I think that WB Interactive is, is just skewing money right it's just losing tons of money if i had to guess and I, I think that all of those factors combined really point to wb selling and the fact that this memo wb games is maintaining the state the same they're not making any big shakeups like they are in, in these other and that's the thing the big shakeups are because they want to save these other areas they want to save hbo max and that's why they're making all these changes because things are not working they're making all these changes the fact that huge shakeups and changes were not announced for wb interactive is a big red flag to me and i never even realized it until you put it that way but uh it really makes a lot of sense and it, it is something that we should be keeping our eye on yeah i mean i not to put too fine a point on it and there's certainly the paragraph that you read in this letter I, the reason they are doing this is they want to fire a lot of people right um and, and to some extent that's because there are legitimate redundancies and, it, and bureaucracies can just build up and build up and build up and you've got three people doing one person's job that certainly can happen but the edict was made to say okay Warner Media is not making what it should. It's not operating as efficiently as it should. We need a full-on deep cleanse audit of what that thing looks like. And then the result is this. Uh, and so a lot, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. And ultimately, that would, in my opinion, hit Warner uh, Brothers Interactive, but not today. They're, they're trying to say, okay, whatever it is right now is what we're trying to sell, and we're not going to rock the boat because that's what you are spending the last two or three months looking at and trying to decide whether the number we want for it is a good number or not. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just, you know, I'm curious to know where WB goes from here because HBO Max has not been successful. WB Games Interactive has not published a successful AAA video game since 2017 with Injustice 2. And even so, that game sold okay. Arkham Knight. When was Mortal Kombat whatever number we're on? Okay, was that's that not after that. No, that's a good point. I'm thinking purely of DC games. That's a good point. That oh, was okay. uh, that was 2019, and MK11 was pretty successful. It was pretty successful. That was my understanding, but I don't I don't pretend to have the numbers in front of me. Right, right, right. And um, so I think that game was was profitable for them, but but otherwise they've not had a lot going on there. The DC movie brand has not really had anything going on. Even the Snyder sure. Cut, they're spending 40 million dollars on that. HBO Max, <laughs> yeah, huge, that's wild, isn't it? Huge investment in HBO Max, and I just think how many people. <laughs> People have to spend ten dollars a month to get forty million dollars back. And how many of those people are signing up just for the Snyder Cut? Now, admittedly, I'm one of those people that will sign up just to watch <laughs> the Snyder Cut. But I don't think you that there. The report on it. I don't think there are enough people that can justify that. And I'm just, I don't understand how they're going to make this money up. And of course, that's why they're firing all these people. So, um, according to the Hollywood Reporter, over 
800 people were were laid off here. Reading now from The Hollywood Reporter, the entertainment giant handed out hundreds of pink slips at ho- as Hollywood continues to reel amid the coronavirus pandemic. Warner Media yeah. has begun a round of layoffs with the entertainment giant letting go hundreds of staffers amid the coronavirus crisis that has crippled Hollywood and shelved tent poles and production shutdowns. The, the laid off employees include Warner Brothers CFO Kim Williams, Warner Brothers Worldwide Television Distribution, Jeff Schlager, blah, 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 blah. So the other yeah, thing yeah, that I yeah. notice about this is that the high level people are being laid off, not just the low level people. What does that say about the way that the execs at AT&T are feeling towards the way the company's been operating. Well, that's that consolidation, right? Okay. So what they're doing is they're taking six groups and they're making it one group and they're trying to streamline their management structure. Uh, but that does mean that anytime you do that kind of thing, and, and they do the big groups here in the letter, but there will be smaller subgroups as well when they do that kind of consolidation, that anytime you do that, you've got six chefs and you need one. Um, and hmm. so that is going to hit your, your top line items as well. And then to some extent, some of the folks with the C-level uh, executive suites will be fired because you got us into this mess. Uh, right. You know, to some extent, you get a, maybe a nice golden parachute, maybe a, a good handshake and, and out the door you go. But to some extent, you don't want to have to hire the, the CEO to come in and kill everybody. So after you've had to do that, some of those big names, those big wigs that are making a lot of money are going to have to go as well. So I don't think that that's unusual. It's unusual for what we follow a lot of the time in, in video games and whatnot, where you're, where you're seeing a restructuring that is not this kind of high level, massive management swing, which is really what we're looking at in Warner. And it's very unusual across all kinds of media groups. And so that's that's odd. It does happen. But when you talk about something like you know the Activision layoffs, that was essentially them cutting off a business arm. That was them cutting off their esports and their marketing arm. And so it doesn't hit Bobby Kotick. It doesn't hit any of the higher ups because they're just essentially cutting off a whole business unit. And maybe it should have. You know, I'm sure your commenters will have their own thoughts on exactly how many C-level executives should have been lost at Activision when that kind of thing happens. But it's not the same kind of thing as there needs to be a sea change as to how this company is organized at its highest level. And that's really what we saw here with Warner Media. Right. And one thing that I wanted to get your your take on is, in some sense, I f- see this potentially increasing bureaucracy, where instead of having six <laughs> mini bureaucracies, risk. instead of six mini bureaucracies, now you just have this gigantic conglomeration of Warner Media, right? And and yeah, I've, well, studios and networks as a group name, it does it does worry you, right? And, and right? it's not necessarily for increased bureaucracy as much as it's agility, right? It's like, right. well, can can one person run True TV and the Warner Movie Pictures lot? Uh, you know, right. it's it's this kind of thing where you were hoping when you built your structure to get specialized labor and information and expertise aimed at a narrow locality where it could be best used. And you're saying, well, that wasn't working out. And frankly, part of it is labor cost. Now, you saw The Hollywood Reporter kind of frame it as coronavirus. That's not really 100% accurate for Warner. Obviously, all of the studios are dealing with this kind of stuff. Right. But Warner Media started this project as part of a longer term, hey, we got to change how things operate. So I I don't know that I would view it as the bureaucracy will get bigger. There's probably fewer people to actually answer to, but they might not have the same kind of local expertise for your particular problem. And so it might wind up feeling like it's more of a bureaucracy because when you go up to the head of studios and networks and they're like, wait, what is, what does your network even do? You're, <laughs> you're likely to have more of those conversations than less. Yeah, I agree. I think this has very little to do with cro- coronavirus. Of course, you know, COVID has impacted everything in business, yeah, right? It's impacted it, everything. It's, it's everywhere. impacted everything. <laughs> but these changes would have happened, I think, with or without coronavirus because yeah. they were headed towards this direction anyway, of course. And as you mentioned, you know, the, the acquisition, I believe, occurred in late 20. 2017. We're now in approaching late 2020, and this is a normal time for them to be reevaluating those assets and looking at how everything's operating. And and like you said, this company is a very, very large company. And HBO Max, for instance, is yeah. incredibly it's just in a totally different universe than WB Games Interactive. And another concern that I would have is that taking consolidating executives, consolidating arms of the company, whereas instead of WB Games Interactive operating in its own sphere of sort of influence, they're kind of off on their own. Now you have 
uh, more say from from people that are less specialized in video games in particular. And then and then I wonder if you're yeah. going to have more corporate execs that are less familiar with video games in the market itself getting into you know, like pushing microtransactions, pushing other things like that, who who may be unaware of the fan backlash that would come come about it. Of course, I'm sure that there is some acknowledgement of, of some of those risks and concerns, but I just I feel like we've all interacted with people that don't really know what they're talking about, but they're still in charge, you know? And Certainly it's in like, games. Right? Yeah. And, and I think that that is where EA and a lot of other companies get into a lot of issue because they have the, you know, coming from maybe finance backgrounds and then they come into video games and then they don't understand that the fans are totally different and they will snap at you. Whereas in banking and finance, some of those things are a little bit yeah, more covered up. Yeah, or even software right? and app development. It just doesn't Absolutely. cross over. It all doesn't the way. cross over at all. And I, and I wonder what effects this is going to have for WB Games Interactive if it does stay in-house. I think that even so, there's going to be a ton of shakeup such that it's not even recognizable. Of course, the whole thing is we do not want them to sell to Activision and EA because we don't like <laughs> how Activision and EA operate. Now, here's the real plot twist. That's WB hey, Games... Was I on your channel before saying Activision was the most likely buyer? I think I was. Yeah, and, and that still may be true. I mean, and then, but here's the real kicker. What if they just hire somebody from Activision to come run WB Games now with these shakeups, you know? And, and yeah. it, or, or they just turn more into Activision or EA because they're not profitable right now. So then they adopt some of those tactics from profitable companies that have the ability to buy them. So I think that part of that is is very interesting to see how that all pans out. And if they become the very thing that we we have sought to destroy in the name of EA. I mean, there's still ways to improve without becoming the devil, right? I mean, it, right. it's like what you described in terms of their output is something that does, if you're a CEO, you look at that and you say, well, I'm not a creative, but I, I can see that that's not the pipeline working at its full capacity. So we, we probably do need some kind of stronger hand, whether that's management, whether that's creative, to, to figure out how to try to get things going in, in the right direction. We don't want to scrub three or four or six projects before we get to something that we think is saleable. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm empathetic, right? I'm a corporate lawyer you have on your channel right now. So I, <laughs> I have these kinds of conversations with, with folks and entities all the time, you know, not multi-billion dollar entities usually, although occasionally. And you do have these conversations. You say, okay, this is clearly a hiccup. This is a, this is a bump in the road and we need to do something about it. And these changes are massive. They are substantial. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs, and that's always a disappointment. They might work, and they might not. Uh, but either way, even if they will ultimately work, what you'll have is growing pains. You'll have a lot of these things that you're talking about right now with people not really fully understanding their new roles and everything else for a period of time. And then if this guy did his job right, and there's no guarantees, if this guy did his job right, then these consolidations will start to work more harmoniously, and you'll see better output. And at Warner Interactive, ultimately, right now, there's nothing to worry about in the short term because they're existing as they are. So they have their continued bosses, and they'll just now report up to a different ladder. But they still have the same kind of uh, transaction and management flow as they used to before all of this happened. Now, what happens if they come off the market and Warner Brothers keeps them? That might right. be when you start to you look at things because, as I said, you know, it's not impossible that you start to consolidate your teams. Uh, that you start to look at who's not performing and figure out whether or not it makes sense to have the overhead cost of, you know, a place like Montreal. Um, and, and so you start to look at whether or not there are costs to be cut there and, and what those would look like if you did, in fact, cut those costs. You see it all the time with other companies that they just they just shutter various studios. Sony is pretty famous for taking their internal teams and, and, and shuttering them, especially when you look at places in, in Japan and in London and, and things like that, and just closing those teams and doing something different with the personnel, oftentimes right. not having to fire how many people that you would think, but not having the same kind of studio structure that they had before Sony got in and said, nope. But you look at Sony and, and love them or hate them, uh, they, they manage their subsidiaries with a fairly strong hand. Uh, and, and that means that you get a certain uniform output and usually a pretty, uh, pretty common often output, right? That they, they're releasing things on a pretty usual cadence. They've had some difficulties with Santa Monica and places like that, but they're, they're releasing things on a regular cadence and they haven't become the devil. Um, right. I think one thing you could say then is that it's possible, uh, but you know, maybe, maybe only for platform holders. Either way, I don't know that it's, it's necessarily the bridge you have to jump off yet that says, oh, it's going to be a loot box frenzy, at least not any more so than like, uh, you know, the Middle Earth games, right? You know, th those had a few loot boxes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
So, I, you know, I, I, it's one of those things where the reason I even kind of grappled with this uh, earlier was that I saw Eurogamer go out with that article and I was like, oh, that's just dead wrong. And I don't blame them for it. I understand this sentence can read that way if you're so inclined to, to read it kind of blindly. But I, I do want people to understand that at bare minimum, this letter has almost nothing to do with interactive and certainly not whether or not people are going to sell it. Yeah, it's one sentence in passing, as you mentioned, among hundreds. It's not what the memo is about. I think that's one it's thing not. that was my misinterpretation. When I read the headlines, I was like, whoa, they released a memo about WB Games Interactive being sold. They and actually that's addressed across, the rumors. Right? It is. Yeah, that's no, one the, of the way the headlines said, presented. Go ahead. One of the things I said on, on my video was, you know, if this were the only statement, if they just took this sentence and they did a separate release that was just this. I could understand reading it this way. Right. They took the time to say, no, it, it's staying in Warner Brothers. Um, that's not what this is at all. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one thing that I'm curious to see, we'll kind of wrap up on this. Uh, with DC Fandom sure. coming forward on, on August 22nd, oh, yeah. we are yeah. now 13 days away. I'm very curious to see how that event goes, because even though they might have basically laid off everyone that set up this this huge event, uh, oh, yeah. and, and by the way, by the way, the layoffs take place, I believe, in November or or later in the year. So they're not taking effect quite yet, but they have been announced. But oh, it, yeah. Mass it, layoffs usually are going to have some statutory compliance. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, DC Fandom is in 13 days. This is a huge event for WB because it is a way to promote all of their different properties. They're promoting new games. Suicide Squad, Rocksteady is, is going to be there on August 22nd. Oh, yeah. You have a new Batman game to look We have a new to, Batman, Batman universe game. game. Exactly. Sorry. That is going to be announced on August 22nd. We have Justice League Snyder cut there's going to be a trailer for that wonder woman 84 is getting a trailer black adam they're probably even going to show robert pattinson's batman movie so okay. lots of new things that are going to be coming and i wonder if that will revive their brand not only that with uh, rocksteady suicide squad and the new batman game being announced then they could even get pre-orders get some cash flow coming in for the first time uh, not for the first time but for like substantial cash flow i mean people are really going to be rushing to get uh to get these games get their pre-orders in and and get hype going for their movie division as well, which has been struggling since uh, since Justice League came out, even in, in late 2017. So I'm very interested to see what this does and, and if it can shake things up. And as you mentioned, th the consolidation alone, alongside the hype coming in from DC Fandom and anticipation for some of their forthcoming IPs, might cause them not to sell. But I think they're really using DC Fandom as a gauge of, okay, where are we at here? Where are fans at with with our forthcoming properties and rock city suicide squad has already received positive feedback we'll see what the trailer looks like and i think yeah, that we will yes. the, the batman game it's going to cause waves online people are going to lose it because a lot of people outside of my you know mini circle of, of super nerds uh, a lot of people don't even know that it's in development or or anything about it they think oh you know rock city they did their last batman game in, or in 2015 and that was the finale to arkham and they don't even know about this new batman game that's been in development for years and years so it's going to shock people and, and that alongside the robert pattinson batman movie trailer it's just going to be incredible to see what happens to their brand and if it gives them a brand lift then maybe they may reconsider selling but uh, I think the whole point that we're trying to portray in this video is that the memo is perhaps not what it has been portrayed to be by the trades, but is not doom and gloom either. It's just it's just basically nothing burger, basically. And we're just going to have to yeah, wait and no, see I, what I, develops I, with it. Like I said, if you want to read it as absolutely nothing, you 100 percent can. I look at it and say it is at least suggestive of the fact that the rumors are entirely true, uh, that you wouldn't expect it to sit kind of still. Uh, on right. the shelf if, if they weren't looking to at least entertain offers for it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on once again. Really enjoyed uh, both of our commentaries we've done together. Please check his channel out in the description below. You just passed 20,000 subs, saw that on Twitter. I did, so big congratulations. milestone. Congratulations. That is yeah, fantastic. No, thank you. And uh, it's amazing what you've been able to do making uh, law, corporate law even, <laughs> the most boring type of law, no offense, uh, and making that relevant and, and applicable and digestible for people. It's really incredible what you're doing yeah. and uh, keep up all the great work. And once again, his channel will be linked in the description below. He has his own standalone video about this topic. So go check that out as well. And thank you so much for, again for joining. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel as well, turn on notifications, and we will see you guys in the next video. All right, thanks for having me.